just connected directly to our 24 volt charge controller here. Then we can connect to the batteries to store energy. Hey friends, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Today we're tackling something exciting and essential. How to install a security camera system in a wildlife conservation area. Sounds impossible? But not for us, so let's dive in. So our client needs 24-7 surveillance in a wildlife research and conservation area. And the goal is habitat monitoring, wildlife protection, and environmental awareness. But here's the catch. There's no electricity, no internet. And the camera spots are up to 5 kilometers from the control room. So, how do we get both power and internet to places like this? So for data transmission, we are using a single mode fiber optic cable. It's ideal for long distance communication. Why? Because it can carry data over tens of kilometers with minimal loss. And unlike ethernet cable, fiber is immune to EMI super reliable and low maintenance so now data is covered but what about power well there is something called composite fiber optic cable which carries both data and power in a single line sounds perfect right but not really over long distances like five kilometers you've got voltage drop and the power loss becomes inefficient and not to mention it's costly to install so instead we go off grid and that brings us to one of the coolest parts of this build solar power our solution is a 24 volt solar power system now let's break it down into three main components first solar panel solar panel converts sunlight into electricity and we'll be using two 12 volt panels in series to create a 24 volt system second charge controller now it regulates the power from the panel prevent overcharging of batteries and ensure the whole system stability last but not least batteries it store energy for nighttime or cloudy days and we'll be using this big battery bank for this demo now let me show you how to build this come on to create 24 volt from two 12 volt panels first we need to connect the positive of panel one to the negative of panel two now you can see they're connected then you'll be left with one free positive and one free negative just connected directly to our 24 volt charge controller here then we can connect to the batteries to store energy so let's get back to the charge controller from the charge controller's output port right here let's connect the output cord we are going to connect and power to this an outdoor poe media converter let me power it up all right so now it's getting the power this outdoor poe media converter is waterproof rated so it's perfect for outdoor harsh environment and it does two things first accept data via fiber optic cable Second, power stick IP camera using power over Ethernet. It can convert the electrical signal into optical signal. And this media converter has a smart thing. It has a built-in power booster. So even though we're fitting it 24 volt, it boosts to 48 volt to properly power the PoE camera. Let me show you. This is a short patch cord. Let's connect it to the PoE port of our outdoor PoE media converter. The indicator light is on, as well as our bullet camera. So it's getting the power it needs. Now let's move on to the fiber optic cable. We're using this two string fiber optic cable and today we're using string A. Make sure you mark it down. First, we need to connect it to a SFP transceiver. This is where we connect to the fiber optic cable. 
then just slide it into the SFP slot of our outdoor PoE media converter. So now the fiber optic cable goes out the other side, headed straight for the control room. So this is our fiber optic cable. On this end to our control room, the fiber first enters through a termination box. This termination box is able to organize and protect our fiber optic cable. Remember, we use spring A. Now let's use a fiber patch cord to connect our fiber optic cable straight to our 16 plus 8 fiber switch. So this switch has 16 SFP slots and 8 Ethernet port. Again, we're going to connect our fiber patch cord to the SFP transceiver. Then slide it into one of our SFP slots. Use a fiber patch cord to connect the Ethernet port to our network video recorder. So we can display live video feed. Now let's give it a minute. Here we go. Now I'm waving my hand so you can see this is a live video feed. Now some might wonder why we only use one fiber optic cable. Shouldn't there be two? Well, because we're using BD SFP transceivers, short for bidirectional, and these transceivers use wavelength division multiplexing WDM to send and receive data over one single string of fiber. So that's efficient, affordable, and easier to install. Now, if you want to build your own solar power system, here's a tip. You can use AI like ChatGPT to do the planning. It will help calculate the system size by providing four critical pieces of information. Which four? Let's talk about them. First, voltage. In this case, 24 volt, which determine how your solar panels, batteries, and devices will be configured. Second, Power consumption. This is how much power your camera or devices uses. For example, we need 10 watts running continuously for 24 hours, means 240 watts hours per day. Third, backup duration. How long the system should keep running without sunlight, such as two days of autonomy to account for cloudy weather. And lastly, location. This affects how much sunlight in peak sun hours you get daily. For example, a site with 4 sun hours per day requires more panel capacity than one with 6 hours. So by inputting these 4 data points into ChatGPT, it can help you calculate the necessary panel wattage, battery capacity, and charge controller size to build a stable 24 volt power system. It's pretty handy, right? So coming to the end of this video, let's summarize our solar power system. So we have solar panel to 12 volt in series for 24 volt. We have a 24 volt charge controller. We have a battery bank and also outdoor PoE media converter, IP cameras and single mode fiber optic cable. We also have a fiber switch plus network video recorder in our control room. And Everything works together to form a self-sustained long-distance surveillance system. So it's ideal for remote environmental monitoring. So this setup is a game changer for wildlife protection and habitat research. No wires, no worries, just clean solar energy and fiber speed data. Now, thank you very much for joining us. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it with your teams or friends. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got more outdoor tech builds coming your way.